Good evening. My name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. Welcome to the evening services for Sunday, February the 18th. Per usual, we will sing several songs, observe the Lord's Supper, and I have a lesson for you that I hope will be uplifting. We sing here at Northfield from Songs of Faith and Praise. I'll give you the number and the name of the song. In case you don't have that book that you can either Google it or if you have a different book, uh, you can perhaps sing along with us. The first song that we will sing in our book is number 67, For the Beauty of the Earth. 67, For the Beauty of the Earth. For the beauty of the earth, for the beauty of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our sacrifice of praise for the beauty of each hour of the day and of the night hill and vale and tree and flower sun and moon and stars of light Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our sacrifice of praise for the church that evermore lifteth holy hands above, offering upon every shore her pure sacrifice of love. Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our sacrifice of praise. Number 103, He Has Made Me Glad. 103, He Has Made Me Glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. 
He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Before the Lord's Supper, we will sing number 902, Nothing But the Blood. 902. Nine oh two, nothing but the blood. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my pardon this I see. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing this my plea. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flood that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done, Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. It is because of the innocent blood that Jesus shed on the cross that we memorialize uh, Jesus' crucifixion at this time and what we have come to know as our communion service or the Lord's Supper. In the Lord's Supper, we use two emblems to represent uh, Jesus' body and Jesus' blood. The body that he gave up for us on the cross the blood that he shed, that we might have forgiveness of sins. And so as we reflect, we reflect uh, uh, as uh, togetherness, one with another, and personally, one with our God. In that while we were yet sinners, God sent Jesus to us, and Jesus was willing to die as a one-time sacrifice for each one of us. So if we would, as we think of this and we just ingrain that in our thoughts. Let's give thanks for the bread. We're grateful, dear God, that at the right time you did indeed send Jesus to us and that he was willing to sacrifice himself that we might live. As we think of his body nailed to that cruel wooden cross, we can't but imagine the pain that he went through the uh, agonizing pain of nails in his hands and his feet. And so as we take this bread into our mouths, let's remember the body that he sacrificed. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. We just sang a song nothing but the blood of Jesus. Uh, the opening line says, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The chorus says, oh precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood 
of Jesus. As we partake of this fruit of the vine, let's remember the blood that Jesus shed for each of us for the forgiveness of our sins. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful not only that Jesus was willing to give up his body, but he was willing to shed his life blood, the blood that is in all of our bodies, that uh, is what uh, keeps us alive in transporting things uh, throughout our body. Help us to understand that this blood just flowed from Jesus's body and it flowed for each one of us as we partake of the fruit of the vine. Let's remember that flow. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. As we have completed the Lord's Supper, also on the first day that we are instructed to lay by and store that which we have prospered. Uh, as Jesus sacrificed himself for us in giving, there should be sacrifice. Uh, there should be a sense of knowing that we are giving back to the Lord. We have but to remember the widow and the two small coins that she put into the offering. It was probably all that she had. It was a sacrifice on her part. Even though the amount wasn't large, the sacrifice was there. We as Christians in the uh, 21st century uh, are much more blessed than that widow was. So as we give and as we sacrifice, help us to do so with a cheerful heart, giving back to the Lord what is his. Let's pray. We thank you, dear God, for the opportunity that we have to give. Help us to give with an open heart. Help us to give in such a way that uh, we understand that it is part of our spiritual sacrifice to give back to you. We just pray that those who are in charge of the monies that we give will use it in such a way that your work will be furthered here and that those that are needy will be in some way taken care of. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. The last song we'll sing is number 722. 722. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. All his wonderful passion and purity May his spirit divine all my being refine Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me When somebody has been so unkind to you some words spoken that pierces you through and through. Think how he was beguiled, spat upon and reviled. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in you. From the dawn of the morning to close of day. In example in deeds and in all you say, lay your gifts at his feet, ever strive to keep sweet. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in you. That concludes our song service. I pray that uh, we were all uplifted. I know that, uh, God was praised in, in our efforts to uh, let him know that we're so grateful for him as our God and Jesus as our Savior. Perhaps uh, when you were there this morning, you were wondering where I was going when I told you the title of this lesson. And the title of the lesson is Honk, Lessons from Geese. 
you must understand this and I have to share it with you. Uh, Jane and I have a seven-year-old grandson in uh, our little development here in Pomona. We have a retention pond and when the pond has water in it, uh, sometimes waterfowl, especially geese and occasionally some ducks gather in it. Uh, our grandson Mark uh, almost daily uh, wants a recounting of how many geese and how many ducks are on that pond. Now, uh, this lesson is not about our grandson, but it is about something that uh, I found to be somewhat intriguing. And that is scriptures and, and two of the songs uh, that uh, we sang were about the beauty of the earth and let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. Uh, the beauty of the earth talks to nature and it talks to illustrations from nature. Understand that the scriptures use things from nature to explain things to us. In Proverbs chapter 6, verses 6 through 11, Solomon directed the sluggard, that's the person that doesn't do much, to consider the ant and how industrious the ant is. And Jesus, in Matthew 6, 26 to 28, referenced the birds of the air, told us to consider the lilies of the field. And so, this evening, we are to consider the geese. By the way, let me preface this by saying uh, there is nothing in the Bible that talks about the geese. And so, uh, <laughs> pardon the expression, I'm flying on my own uh, this morning to give us some examples of how geese, especially the way they fly, provide an example for us. You and I are on a Christian walk. We are on a journey. The Christian journey started our baptism and ends when we take our last breath. And as Christians, we have to lead a certain type of Christ-like life. And I would like to share with you uh, five examples of the way geese act, especially when they fly, and how that applies to us. First, have you ever heard the word synergy? S-Y-N-E-R-G-Y. -E synergy. Synergy uh, has to do with working together. It's kind of like if you remember your biology lessons years ago, uh, something called symbiosis. When geese fly in, in formation, as they flap their wings, it creates an uplift for the birds that follow. And by following in this V formation, the whole flock, and this is science proven, the whole flock adds 71% greater flying range than if the birds flew alone. And so there's reason why as birds like geese migrate, they migrate in formation because they can fly better and they can fly further. What's our lesson as Christians? What's our lesson as member of the Lord's church? People who share a common direction and a sense of community can get to where they are going quicker and easier because they are traveling in the trust of one another. Do you trust the brethren that you worship with? This is the principle of synergy. Two or more agents working together to produce a result not as easily attainable by any of the agents if they acted independently, which explains the biblical principles of two by two. Jesus talked about this 
in Mark chapter 6 and verse 7, Luke chapter 10 and verse 1. The book of Acts explains the practice of two by two in Acts chapter 13 and verse 2. And in the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon talks about uh, two that uh, actually can share heat with one another uh, when they're cold. And it talks about, uh, it talks about how a, a knot with many strands is stronger. And so I would propose first that we can learn lessons from geese by their synergy, by the way they function together with one another. Two, geese benefit by mutual edification. All right, where are you going with this, Simon? When a goose falls out of formation, all of a sudden it feels the drag and the resistance of flying alone. If you've ever watched NASCAR, uh, you see these, especially on the big tracks, these cars uh, drafting one another, uh, and I'll, I'll address that in a minute, pulling one another along. And if you've ever watched what happens when one of them gets out of the draft? The, the car dramatically falls behind. And so if a goose falls out of formation, it immediately recognizes that it did and seeks to get back in that formation again and take advantage of the lifting power of the other birds, especially the one immediately in front of it. Lesson, do we have as much sense as the goose? When it suddenly feels the drag, when it suddenly feels the resistance of flying alone, it moves quickly back into formation to take advantage of the lifting power immediately in front of it. Do we have the good sense to hitch on to people who are on the same walk that we are? Within our churches, every member of the Lord's church has a similar goal. That's to reach the promised land of heaven. And although I am solely accountable for myself, we can indeed help one another. Are we willing to accept others' help? Are we willing to give help to us? Strong Christians understand the value of mutual edification. Hebrews 3, 12 to 14. Hebrews 10, 24 that talks about encouraging one another in love and good deeds. Uh, these are scriptures from the book of Hebrews that tell us how we can lean on one another and aid one another in our Christian walk. This mutual edification, uh, I believe, within the context of the local church, explains this to us, where... In the, in the air, the, the birds are called a skein. On the ground, they're called a gaggle. A, a group of Christians is called a church. All right. Third item. Geese share the burden. Now here's an interesting thing. When the lead goose in the formation tires it rotates back into the V. It rotates back into the formation. Another goose leads and flies from the point position. And now that goose who was tired has the benefit of the lifting power of the other geese. It's similar to the way bike riders 
uh, do that. If we looked at the Tour de France, and I'll address that a little bit more. You know what? In the church, it pays to take turns doing things, the hard tasks, sharing the leadership with each other. As with geese, people are, when they're flying, they're interdependent upon one another, and so are we. There are people that have capabilities that we may not have, and uh, there are unique arrangements by which all of us can benefit by all of the talents that each within the church have. As members of the body of Christ, we are to do our part. Read Ephesians chapter 16, uh, uh, chapter 4, verse 16. Fourth on my list, geese encourage those who lead. The geese that are flying in formation honk to encourage those up front to keep up their speed. Now you might think, well, they're just honking to honk. They're honking with purpose. They're not complaining. They're honking to encourage. We need to make sure as Christians that our honking, <laughs> our words are words of encouragement. The, in, in groups, people that encourage one another accomplish more. It's told in the business world that one attaboy is worth 10 harsh criticisms. When we lift someone up by saying, boy, you did a good job with that, we are encouraged. And the power of encouragement to stand by each other because we share the same core values and encourage one another is the quality of, quote, honking that we seek. Such should be the purpose when we share with one another. I use the term honking because we're talking about geese to build others up. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29 and Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. Explain that. Finally, geese care for one another. They care for one another. When a goose gets sick and flying, gets wounded, we know about hunting, and even gets shot down, one or two geese from the formation will drop out of the formation and follow it down to help and protect it. They stay with it either until they understand that that goose is incapable of moving on or until it dies. Then they launch back out, catch up with the formation, and get back with the flock. Uh, in the Tour de France, it works such a way that there are teams of riders. And there's one rider that they expect to be the best rider in the group, but that rider is helped by his team. And if he falls back, uh, his teammates fall back with him because they care for him. This is, this is the one that uh, is the prime uh, guy in their group. And with that in mind, uh, if we have as, as much sense as the geese, we'll stand by each other in difficult times. We'll care for one another. Uh, Jane just got back from Kansas. Uh, some of you know, uh, uh, our brother-in-law Larry had back surgery a couple of weeks ago and Elaine suffered an injury while we were on vacation in Egypt. They are both, uh, have some incapabilities right now. And so three weeks ago, their son Brandon came out with them and helped them for a week. Then their daughter Sarah came out and helped them for a week. And then this past week, Jane went out. Why? Because they care for one another. And here's another really neat thing about that. Uh, during this stretch of time, members of their church 
members of their church had provided meals for them. Sometimes they brought over food that lasts for a day or two. And I'm thinking to myself, isn't that what the church is all about? Caring for one another, benefiting from one another, helping one another. That's what Ecclesiastes 4.10 tells us. And it's what Galatians uh, chapter 6 verses 1 and 2 tells us. When it tells us to do good to all, especially to those of the brotherhood of faith. And so with that in mind, and I know it, there was a kind of a play on words or however you want to call it with the geese, but we can learn a lesson. We can learn synergy. We can learn the benefit of mutual edification. We can learn the gift of sharing the burden. We can uh, learn the lesson of encouraging those that lead. And finally, we can learn the lesson of caring for each other. As I look at it, and I sang two songs uh, about nature, uh, as I look at it, uh, God gave geese this instinct to succeed in their flight migration, to get where they are going. And with that in mind for us, by the living word of God and by his creation, God gives us all the wisdom that we need to succeed in our migration. Yes, our journey here on earth, our Christian walk, our sojourn is a migration. It's a migration from the kingdom of God here on earth, his church, to the kingdom of heaven, which is our goal. And so we have the lesson of the geese. I hope that it uh, etches itself in your memory and makes it a little bit easier to understand. I said when uh, all of this started, uh, synergy only happens when we are all indeed together and we are on the same walk. If you haven't started your Christian walk, we extend that invitation to you this evening. If you know that uh, you want to be a part of this sojourn, you want to be a part of this migration to heaven, that you need to be a child of God. You do that by having heard the word of God and believing it, repenting of your former life and confessing Jesus as the son of God, and then being baptized for the remission of your sins. We start our walk. We start our journey. We start our migration. If you have that need this evening, get in touch with one of us. We'll be willing to aid you in any way we possibly can. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for your word in which we find uh, uh, the magnificence of the Holy Spirit when he instructed writers to use uh, examples that'll help us for those that are lazy to remember the ant, for those who sometimes don't understand Jesus's love for you uh, to understand that God knows about the birds and the lilies of the field. Bless us in our journey, bless us in our migration that we might constantly try to be godly in every way to be Christ-like in our actions. Bless us as we are on our Christian walk. Help us to lift one another up as we make our way toward the kingdom of God in heaven. Bless us this evening and be with us. I pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all. God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Some
Oh, God.